In this video here, I explain the importance of culture in design. In this video, I will clarify what inclusive design is. In doing so, I'll answer these questions. What is inclusive design? Why is inclusive design important? How to make your design more inclusive? And examples of inclusive design. Welcome back to Design and Technology On Demand. My name is Charlotte and I make weekly videos every Wednesday and Sunday teaching you how to succeed in your Design and Technology GCSE. I just want to say a massive thank you for the people that have already hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, make sure you do as it helps my channel grow. Okay, let's get to it. What is inclusive design? Inclusive design is designing with trying to include as many people as possible without excluding anyone. It is the challenge to consider the needs of others and their perspective from ability, language, culture, gender, age, physical appearance, ethnicity, education, and so on. With the need of more inclusive world, designers are seeing products and designs like buildings, vehicles, household items, makeups, working environments, and sports equipment in a whole new light started to think about the challenge of what it means to be inclusive. Why is inclusive design important? I think it's pretty obvious why. However, you may not actually realise how much it impacts people. Approximately 1 billion people or 15% of the world's population experience some form of disability. That's a lot of people to affect on a day to day. They can feel like they have been excluded and don't belong. It could be something simple like not having the grip to be able to open a food item or be able to hold a toothbrush or even control or be able to move a computer mouse. How many of those things would affect your day? And how would you feel? Frustrated, angry, useless, exhausted, determined, maybe even failure. Hopefully that shocked you enough to make you start to think. If we focus on the eyesight, something that we take for granted, our eyes allow us the luxury of watching TV, use our smartphones, see our family and friends, buy clothes, see new trends, places and pets. In 2015, there was an estimated 253 million people with visual impairment worldwide. Of these, 36 million were blind and a further 217 million had moderate to severe visual impairment. So 253 million people is a huge demographic for us to completely exclude. But we can also add to that people that have temporary visual impairment like surgeries. And if we also look at perhaps the change of environment of where we put those products, that too can also change our visual ability. Just take your phone or an iPad that has a glare into the sun. Thankfully, technology has developed and the visually impaired are now able to access the real world and the digital with Braille transcription software, Braille keyboards, Braille lift buttons, screen reader softwares and tactile pavements. The tactile pavement, which was originally created to guide and warn people who have visual impairment by the simple change of surface of raised dots at the end of pavements, underground or on top of staircases. This now also benefits everyone. As we walk with our noses buried in our smartphones and our minds always preoccupied, this invention is a win-win for all. An awareness and being mindful of this and include it within our design process. Not only increase sales as you're meeting more people, but also morally help people to feel included. How to make your design more inclusive. For designers, it's very important to integrate inclusivity into early phases of the design process. If they save it for the end, they may end up retrofitting a fundamental inaccessible design. By having an inclusive mindset from the very beginning of your design process can help you look at things in a slightly different way. You'll be able to generate new ideas and solve problems. So identifying and understanding why people were excluded in the very first place. This can be done through primary research, maybe by conducting observational studies, like watch someone's day-to-day -day challenges and designing around these problems. Interviewing and physically learning about their ability and what problems hold them back. Maybe it could be to do with limitations that they have and how that affects them to be independent on finding perhaps work in their dream industry or being able to take part in a sport and activity. Or even reevaluating an existing product, looking at the negative reviews or conducting focus groups to get feedback on any existing problems. Once you have a concrete understanding, you'll be able to start designing and testing your solution. This is known as user-centered design. It's where a designer fully focuses on, on the user's needs and what their requirements are. This happens throughout the whole process, how they will interact with it and how that product will actually make their lives easier. For this reason, inclusive design is not a venture any designer can take on their own. It is a collaboration effort that involves speaking to and learning from other people. In other words, expanding your perspective as best you can. 
Let's look at some other examples of inclusive design. I've also put a link within the box below for further research. Microsoft have adapted and redesigned some of their accessories, making it possible for people with missing limbs or lack of mobility, which makes it challenging or nearly impossible for someone to use improving their work or school life, but also making other areas of the digital world accessible. Let's look at some different products that perhaps don't look at ability. Dana created Fenty Beauty, a brand that now offers 50 different foundation shades. She reportedly made $100 million in the first 40 days, and Times Magazine named it one of the 25 inventions of the year. Why? Because the beauty brand had something for everyone. Her success was formed on a strong understanding and need for all women's skin tones to be considered. Lastly, a really clever project known as the ABLE. This is a partnership between IKEA and some accessibility experts. Their end goal is to make furniture inclusive and accessible to everybody. They design and 3D print accessories that add on to pre-existing furniture within IKEA. Let's end this video with a question. Make sure you put your comments in the box. Builders are incredibly important to be inclusive. However, older buildings perhaps don't meet some of these requirements. Identify one area that you know that has been or needs to be adapted. It could be a lift, stairs, doors, furniture, maybe bathroom or kitchen. If you found value within my video, then do please hit that like and subscribe button to help my channel grow. You may also want to check out some of my other videos. See you in the next video where we look into the production techniques and systems.